Hi guys, it's Matt, and we're back with more Shadowrun Hong Kong. So let's just jump in where we left off, and hope it actually jumps in where we left off. Cause there we go. Yeah, sinless. Mission two: You scramble up a ladder and through an access. Yeah, let's try that again. You scramble up a ladder and through an access way through the sewer system, spit you out into Hong Kong Mass Transit Railway System, the MTR. Crossing the rails, you climb up to the platform and into the station. Above you is some place that I'm sure I couldn't pronounce last time, where the rat shaman and the little decker plants to plead your case to Kindly Sheng, the one woman they know who can help you get underground and off the grid fast. But there'll be a prize. Sheng is a triad boss who favours tend to come with strings attached. The sands of the world's front at night leak down from the stairway to the surface. Peering up the steps, you catch a glimpse of the night sky, overcast and low. And load screens. Uh, what I've done here this time is I've turned the music up a little bit more. Um, someone, uh, Necro, actually said he'd like to hear more of the music, so I've turned that up a bit too a bit. Tell me if it's a bit too much. And uh, I apologise if you can hear TV in the background. Hopefully it won't impact things a great deal. Especially when the guns start shooting, you shouldn't be able to hear that. <coughs> the, sewers de the sewers deposit you into a series of mechanical access wires that eventually lead to a system of railway tunnels. The gobbit leads you through five or six magnetically sealed doors and across several sets of electrified tracks until she indicates that you've reached your destination. This is the MTR station. Once you go up those stairs you'll be in our neighbourhood. Connie Shem runs the operation out of a mahjong parlour that they call Swift Winds. There's an APB out on us. How do you expect us to go to Swift Winds place without taking a bullet? Oh, he's lost his, uh, lost his goggles. Uh, Heo is a well-known place for, uh, well-known as protected area. Connie Shang sees that. It's a shadow community. Smugglers, hijackers, black marketeers. You get the idea. Cops tend to give this place a wild berth. Police cameras don't last long out here. Between the smog and the cloud cover, we shouldn't have to worry about drone surveillance either. The HKPF won't find you, not if you follow our lead. Now here's to how this is going to work. You can get an audience with Shang until we secure a place you get an invitation. So me and his will go ahead and pay our respects. Then we request that she sees you, politely. Is she a queen? As far as you're concerned, yeah, she's queen of Kowloon. One more thing, Kindly Shen is a dangerous woman. She may seem friendly, but don't let that guard drop. Whatever you do, do not disrespect her. Dealt with dangerous people all my life. You'd better if you don't. It's all of our asses. Okay, we'll go ahead and smooth the way. Just give us a few minutes, heads up. Um. Hmm. What if the locals recognize us from news broadcast called the cops? No one here calls cops. Doing that around here is a quick way to get dead. Yeah, I get it. That's good, you catch on real quick. You need to get your sins burned as badly as you do. We need your sins burned as badly as you do. And we need to figure a way to... Oh, I don't know why I'm following the words with my cursor. It's actually throwing me off. Uh, we need your sins burned as badly as you do. And we need to get a figure... And we need to figure a way out of this shit, or we're all dead. See at the Mahjong parlour. The shadow runner's footsteps quickly fall away, and then you're alone with Wu. You grunt something unintelligible, and begins panther stalking back and forth again. Footprints of sewer water and muck marking his path on the platform behind him. Minutes pass. Wu stops his pacing and runs both his hands over his face grunning a sound of anxiety and disgust. It dissipates and he stands there silently, his hands covering his face and his shoulders shaking with emotion. Then he begins to laugh. It's a laugh that comes from down deep, from the place where fear and frustration and impotence swell. But the barrier holds, Wu focuses taking control of his breathing and the laughter begins to slow. He becomes himself again. Oh my god, Amelia, are you fucking kidding me? What the hell are we doing here? How did we get into this? 
I think I'm going to lose it. Bullshit, you're a rock, dude. I'm trying to maintain, seriously, I am, but... Carter is dead, Amelia. They fucking ended her. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Let us... Yeah, it sounds to me like she was more than just a part of Duncan. More than just a part of, of course she was. She's my training officer, you idiot. My mentor. Didn't mean anything by it, Duncan. Carl was my partner, she had my back. Do you know how important that is? What it means to lose that? When you're out there on the streets facing down a food right, you need to know someone's looking out for you. That you're standing next to someone you can depend on. That was Carter. She's like my compass, or my anchor, or some sh such shit. She kept me, I don't know, sane. Um, let's see. Yeah, how about we focus on not getting killed with, with Glare's back. He's right hand flexing, then he steps back, sucking in a deep breath. Screw it, whatever she was, I'm throwing her down the memory hole. You know why? Because it doesn't matter now. Because we're going to burn our sins, Amelia. Jesus Christ, do you get what that means? The moment we do that, we're dead. To all the world, we're dead. We're wiped clean. Raymond, the house we grew up in, my career, car up, all gone. No home, no money, no identity, nothing. We will be nobody. I don't know why that voice is in Cantonese. In the background, I don't know. I, I, it's coming from here. Uh, enough of the drama, Wu. Put on your big boy pants and help me find a way out of this. Put on... Put on your... what? I don't like that sentence. I've been wearing big boy pants for years. And who the fuck are you to tell me what to do after all this time? You left me behind, Amelia. You left me behind. You left me behind. Memories flash bright. Suddenly, we you're back to eight years ago on the street outside Raymond's house. Just you and Wu. Middle of the night. <clears throat> Can't just leave like this, Amelia. What am I going to say to Raymond? You know how he is. Yeah, he's... Gotta go, dude. Seriously, that's it. Well, it's so important that you have to run out now, in the middle of the night, without even telling Raymond why. Okay, all of these are truth options. So, okay. It's a job too good to pass up. Some people mess with me, don't intend to let them get away with it. I need to see a guy about a deal, the good kind, the big kind. I've got a friend in a bind, Duncan, that's all I can say. I have to go help. Sorry, Duncan, I can't talk about it. I would if I could. Ooh, how are these all the truth? Just go with that. Can't talk about it, I don't like this, Melee. It sounds like it sounds like the kind of shit we said we'd leave behind. Look, whatever's going on, I can tell you one thing, Raymond will not approve. Two, three days tops. And the look on Duncan's face as you walked away. The events that followed were a blur, one that you don't care to remember. Three days later, you were behind bars in a private corporate prison. No interrogation, no charges, no appeal. Years later, some corporation brought some other corporation, and the new board of directors pushed through some of their reform agenda. Some sort of reform agenda, even. The higher-ups gave an order, and then you were out with a few hundred new yen to your name, and once Gary has held a non-disclosure agreement, ensuring your silence. Not that it mattered to you anymore. You're starting fresh, determined. Till Raymond brought you back down, left you that voicemail, brought you to Hong Kong, and back together with Duncan Wu. You realise that Blue's been staring at you. Now let's hear it. Where the hell have you been all this time? Why didn't you contact me? At least tell me you're alive. Uh, ooh, okay. Yeah. Woo. Think I didn't? I tried everything. You were completely off the grid. Now I understand why I locked up, huh? Shit. Range of emotions black across Woo's face. He stares at the ground for some time before finally looking back up at you with a heavy sigh. Wow. I really didn't know how to process that one right now. I... I don't know. 
If we're still alive tomorrow, we can talk more. This shit's too much. We're marooned on this island, hunted by the cops, and my partner is dead. Raymond is missing, and we're about to go see a crime lord about erasing our goddamn identities. And as a bonus, our only allies are a pair of tiny criminals who would kill us if they were so... Kill us if they could so they didn't have to deal with this. Listen, Amelia, back in the Barrens, whenever I was out of control, you just handled the situation, remember? We caught a gun, and just a raw nerve, I'm afraid I'm going to slip back, and people are going to start getting cut again. I got lead. Good. Now let's go meet this tribe woman and get our damn sins burned. I want to rip this bandage as fast as I can. Okay, I guess. Finally, there we go. Okay, a mass steel security door is set into a bunker like concrete wall. There is no sign or identification of what this place is. A battered intercom is encased in a cage of wielded steel and armor glass. Grinding letters are barely readable on the screen. Ooh, okay. Hello. What do you want? Is this a medical clinic? No, it's chicken factory. What do you want? Need a cyber dock. Oh shit. He's gonna check on that, and apparently I am not. Probably get access to that in a bit. Hello, Triad Guard. Entrance to the wall city is closed to foreigners. Okay. That's close enough, friend. This club is members and invitees on invites only. Oh, he's got a cyber cat, that's cool. Invites only. I suggest you just move along. My friends are inside, dude. No. That's cool. But it's, I don't know what that is, but it's cool. Um, just up here. That's the same boat hole. Bolt hole. The original name has been sloppily painted over with black paint. New but somewhat weathered characters have been painted out in bolt hole. Bluff hole. Bolt hole. Okay. Smuggler. Hello, smuggler. Just, just off the docks, you see a sea worn man with a smile that's almost too wide for his head. His teeth shine white against the thick black bush of his beard. His clothes are a myriad of colours, patterns, and fabrics. A smart ring of culture striped across his body. If there's anything he's clearly advertising, it's the extent of his travels. You see something you like? Come and get it, because now is your last chance. Everything is on sale. Won't find prices like these anywhere else, my friend. Show me what you're selling. Um. I'll buy that. Mana bolts. Um, what? Nine, nine twenty four. I can't afford that. Okay. Yeah. 
think I just bought that. That's his place. Swift winds mahjong while I filled with the stink of cigarette smoke, the incessant click like a mahjong tiles in the grim faces of hardened gamblers. Kindly shame. There we go. Let's talk to her. You can feel every eye in, in the room as you cross across the mahjong parlour to the middle aged woman sitting patiently at its end. The click clack of the ivory coloured tile stops, hands dry beneath tables, into jacket pockets behind backs. The woman has the face of a prison guard and the demeanour of an inmate. Her salt and pepper hair is pulled into an iron heart bun and beneath it two shiny black eyes offer nothing, buttons sewn onto a doll. A nearby empty bottle of something foul rests on a mahjong table, nestled between a pair of dirty shot glasses. Tiny puddles of brown linger at their bottoms. Gobbit and Isabel stand on the other side of the table, head lowered, shoulders slumped, hands clasped. clasped. They risk a frightened glance at you as you approach. I wish I could do like a... Um, I don't know if you guys have seen Daredevil, but the Chinese chick... Well, I say Chinese chick. The, um, the mobster who's from the place where Iron Fist comes from. That's who, who she should sound like. But I can't do that voice, so I'm not going to. Uh, my little pair of fuck-ups have told me that what happened on the docks. How two of my best runners had their heads put out. How you need protection and how you need to get your identities wiped before you get your heads put out too. Potentially leading the heat to my front door, placing me and everyone in my employee in danger. So wise. So very, very wise. We're, we're sorry, aren't you? We thought... You mustn't speak until you're spoken to, Gobbit dear. And since you're one of the sh you are one short hair away from being dumped in the river chain to Isabel's corpse, I suggest that you let your new friends here do the talking for a while. Does that make sense to you, dear? Yes, Auntie. Very good. You learn so quickly. I shall remain silent. So now, my darlings, I understand from the little rat shit here that you came from Seattle to meet with my client, Mr. Black. But before you could find him, the HKPF started spattering grey matter everywhere and everything went to shit. And now you need your sins burned so you can disappear before you end up dead too, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Why don't we start telling me who you are? Call me Underdog. My name is Brooke. And have you got a first name, Brooke? A profession? I mean, you do want me to erase your identity, don't you, dear? I need to tell you. I'll need to know who you are first. Amelia, I do what needs doing. I know the type. And how did you become someone who does what needs doing, Amelia? Uh, okay, so lies, lies, lies. Picked it up young, I've been in the cooler for a few. Still can't believe it. Kind of shame whips her head towards Wu, a nasty retort already on her lips. But then she stops, sticks out her lower lip as she sizes him up. She turns to a lieutenant standing behind her, nodding her approval. Looks like the gun show is in town. What's your name, gun show? Duncan Wu, I'm a cop, Lone Star. Here, there were some fresh corpses around the docks night. Smugglers, I believe. Didn't sound like the Hong Kong police when I heard about it. You're doing, Duncan Wu? Identify myself as Lone Star, but they wouldn't stand down. They had weapons. It was self-defense. I don't care, sweetie. They weren't my people. But now I know you're a life-taker, Mr. Gunshow. You and your friend here. But now I'm curious. 
Why were you meeting Raymond Black at the docks tonight? He is our foster father. Interesting. Sorry kids, but he was looking like shit when I saw him. Eyes half open, dark circles around them, dragging his feet the whole bit. Your foster daddy was in a bad place. Sounds like he wasn't sleeping. Could be. From what he said, it sounded like he was having nightmares. He was stuffed in the middle of a sentence and muttered something to himself. One time it was about the walls breathing or something. Another time it was about teeth. Thousands of teeth. I remember him drifting off near the end of our meeting. He looked like he was somewhere else in his head. He said, I left prosperity in there. Then Nightjar put his hand on Mr. Black's shoulders, asked him why he wanted to go to the Bald City so badly. That seemed to bring him back. That seemed to bring him back, even. When the old man opened his eyes, they were full of tears. Then he muttered something I couldn't make out. Your daddy got really irritating after a while. I can imagine. Alright, let's get to it. You two need your sins burned and you need them burned fast. Hong Kong dragnets are bad news. When they roll out, they roll in force. Armour personnel carriers, heavy armour, heavy weapons, sorcerers, the whole thing. And they aren't coming to arrest you. The good news is, I can help you. With a wave of my hand, I can have your sins disappear. But you need to understand, my darlings, is this is what you're asking for, isn't it? Is that what you're asking for is not a simple request. Burning a sin isn't just deleting a number, it's wiping all references to that number from all of the world's largest databases. It's masking your mugshot in their facial recognition database so that, that, so that the first camera you walk past doesn't bring them down on you like a ton of bricks. It's covering our fu fucking traces so that they act, so the act of burning your sin doesn't lead them right to us. It requires contacts in numerous corporations and the UCAS government. It requires someone like me. Therefore, I need to make a choice. Do I kill you and dispose of your bodies before the cops come looking for you, or do I help burn your sins? Um, you may want to think about your rep as a fixer. Two of your runners have taken down by the cops and you have no idea why. So clever. So, so clever, yes. Yes, I have been placed in a delicate situation, haven't I? Regardless, that's the situation whether you're alive or, such, or sucking dirt. Stares at you for a moment. Chin still on hand, thinking. Taps her ash on the floor without taking her eyes off you. You live, you're cleverer, and I like that. I'll put your sins to the torch. However, I need to call in several valuable favours within my network to do it. And those favours do not come cheap. You will owe me. Whatever you say, auntie. Don't roll over so easily, my darling. People will think you're an ass kisser. It's unbecoming. I want you to deliver a message to me, for me, to a business associate in the Ward City. The Yellow Lotus has a strong presence inside Amelia. Isabel can tell you all about it, can't you dear? Isabel grew up within the Ward City. <coughs> they collect taxes for the corporations, extort protection money from shopkeepers, run drugs, guns, people, they hurt people. We do those things, yes, but to be fair we also operate the Black Sea. Uh, the Wall City's black market. You might not be alive today if it weren't for the lifeline that we provide. There is a red pole, a sort of info. There is a red pole, a sort of enforcer. Yes, on the inside, his name is Strangler Bio. Bow? I don't know. Let's say Bow. Bow is a strong man, a good soldier, but he has forgotten his place. I need you to remind him. So, no. If I wanted him dead, I would have said so. Don't jump to conclusions, you aren't any good at it. This is a message for Bao. You'll deliver it to him in my name and then return to me. Remember, underdog, Bao's men are my men. By right, they should all be serving me. I would prefer if they did so quietly, without killing... I would prefer it if you did this quietly, without killing them. I have no use for dead soldiers. One of you will go with these two westerners to the Bald City, help them locate Bao and show them the ropes. They will remain here with me. I have several menial and degrading tasks that need doing around the establishment. No matter who goes and who stays, you'll both pay for bringing an APB to my doorstep. Yes, auntie. Yes, auntie. 
now I'm going to find out who ordered the hit on Nightjar and do some dentistry on him with the power tools. That boy was my favourite. He sang to me sometimes. The other one I don't care about. Good shot was an asshole. That will be all my darlings. Return to me when you're done. You can thank me after you deliver my message to bow, then I'll do the favour of raising you. Karma. Let's uh let's spend this. Ben Karma. Um Okay. Who was this? So I said, don't mess with the law. Onto Shang said you'd be coming, you can pass. Uh huh. Sweet. Choosing your team. Okay, City of Darkness. Kowloon Walled City, the most densely populated spot on Earth. Nearly 40,000 people crammed into seven acres of chaos, poverty, and disease, and vice. A self contained city that collects no taxes and provides no city services. Stagnant water sits in temporary wells. Trash lies piled on roofs for controlled burns. Improvised structures lean dangerously over populated areas. It's the idea of breeding ground for all manner of illicit trade, drugs, gambling, black market trade, meta-human trafficking and everything in between. The only law is triad law. And now you need to enter the septic system of a city, find a triad enforcer named Strangler Bow, and deliver a message for Kindly Shank. Yeah, let's go for it. Um. I Ooh. Yeah, let's go. 